So now we are talking about electrolysis and we can simply define electrolysis as the decomposition of an electrolyte in aqueous solution or molten state by passing an electric current through it. So we are going to discover that electrolysis is a chemical process uh, that takes place when substances are decomposed, uh, compounds are decomposed uh, to give uh, some other mm, compounds or elements. Uh, electrolysis, we are going to discover that it is not uh, a, a spontaneous process, rather it is a chemical, uh, electrically mm, induced process. Look at an example here, we have hydrogen, hydrogen chloride uh, that gives us hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. This equation here is not balanced. Uh, we are going to discover that that equation there can, or that reaction above cannot uh, occur spontaneously but rather we have to induce the reaction to give us the products given in the equation above. Uh, what happens? Look at this. We are going to discover that uh, the charge on hydrogen ion is 1 and the charge on chloride ion is negative 1 uh, and the charge this side on hydrogen gas is 0 then chlorine gas is also 0 uh, uh, from hydro hydrogen ion to give us the hydrogen gas we discover that hydrogen positive one that is the charge then hydrogen gas has a charge of zero uh, from positive uh, one to zero we discover that hydrogen has gained so here we have gain of electrons here we have gain of have gain of electron and we simply define gain of electron as reduction So hydrogen ion has been reduced to hydrogen gas. On the other hand, look at this. From the chloride ion to chlorine gas, from a charge of negative 1 to a charge of 0, there has been a loss of electron because simply uh, having a negative charge means that the uh, atom has excess electrons. So it gives away those electrons. So the loss of the electrons is called the uh, oxidation. So here we have loss of electrons. Simply this one means oxidation. So two processes occur in one equation. So we have loss of electrons and then gain of electrons. Uh, we are going to look at this in a more detailed form by looking at our first example uh, in the electrolytic cell. That is our electrolytic cell. Uh, the components in the electrolytic cell are um, we have the we have a terminal this side, we are yet to know its name, then we have another terminal this side. This red terminal you see has been connected to the positive end of the uh, positive end of the battery, well as the black terminal or the black rod is connected to the negative rod. So this one is the positive end, so it's a negative. And down here you have the electrolyte, electrolyte. In this case, we have electrolyte as HCl. Our HCl. Uh, we have the beaker that is holding the electrolyte and then the uh, electrodes inside. Uh, the positive terminal will pull electrons from the solution. So electrons will be pulled from this. That's why we have this arrow facing up. So electrons will be pulled from the solution, moving up towards the battery. So this terminal or this rod will be called the anode. The anode. And on the other side, uh, electrons will be pulled from battery and uh, going back to the electrolyte. So we have uh, electrons again flowing back through the what we call the cathode. 
So this side of the electrolytic cell, the right hand side, we have the cathode, whereas on the left hand side, we have the anode. The anode pulls electrons from the electrolyte, whereas the cathode pushes electrons to the electrolyte. So in solution, in solution, hydrogen chloride ionizes to give us hydrogen ions, uh, chloride ions, hydrogen ions. So they are, they, they are randomly distributed throughout the whole of this solution. They are randomly distributed. And we know that unlike poles attract each other. So being that the anode is the, post, is the, is the positive terminal, it will attract negative ions. And in solution now we have, had, uh, we have chloride ions. So the chloride ions will migrate to, will migrate to the uh, anode. So on reaching here, they come with their negative charge and uh, being that they are negative charge, they lose these excess electrons to the what? So they give the excess electrons to the anode and hence will become uh, ordinary or normal atoms just without the charge and another uh, another chloride atom will come with its charge and gives its electrons the electron will be moved up to the what up to the battery so on moving up we shall remain with uh, a normal atom so the normal atoms will combine to form chlorine gas when they combine they give us chlorine they give us chlorine gas. So at the uh, anode we shall have chlorine gas formed. Why? Because the chloride ions have been discharged giving us chlorine gas. So uh, the same thing happens on the side of the cathode. The hydrogen ions will also come here. Let us use two of them. As they come, electrons from the battery will also flow and are given to the hydrogen ions. Why? Because the hydrogen ions are lacking an electron. That's why we are having this positive charge. So the electrons will be given to the hydrogen ions. And on giving them the electrons, we shall have uh, ordinary atoms and which will combine in the end, giving us hydrogen, hydrogen gas. So on discharge of hydrogen ions at the cathode, uh, we shall have uh, hydrogen gas. I'm repeating this. Chloride atoms are attracted to the anode because they are negatively charged, whereas the anode is positively charged. And the hydrogen ions will be attracted to the cathode because they are positively charged, whereas uh, the cathode is positively, uh, is negatively charged. Mm. So from that, we can now write the half equations of the cell. So half, half equations of the cell. So, if we are trying to the half equations of the cell, uh, we can begin with the cathode. We can begin with the cathode. At the cathode, what happens at the cathode? I have said hydrogen ions, uh, hydrogen ions are coming to the cathode and they are gaining. So, we put a plus sign. They are getting electrons uh, and later discharged to give us hydrogen gas. But remember, it is two iron or two atoms that combine to form a diatomic element. So we put here our two two ions are given two electrons to give us hydrogen gas. So at the anode, I'm going to first write uh, a, a, an equation and later I'll, I'll rectify it. Uh, so we have at the anode, at the anode, we have two chloride ions. Ah, uh, two chloride ions are losing two electrons uh, we have here two chloride ions losing two electrons giving them away to give us to give us chlorine chlorine gas uh, but remember it is not try right to put a negative negative sign into our equation so it's better we transfer this to a uh, minus two to this side or the right hand side of the equation we can write it correctly as uh, two chloride ions giving us uh, uh, chlorine gas plus two electrons so that is the better way of writing of writing the equation we don't put negatives in the equation so uh, after writing the half equation at the end we can write the full equation 
of the reaction. How do you write the full equation? It is by adding the two equations. Uh, how do we add up? Uh, add the equation at the anode and at the same time the equation at the cathode. So beginning with this, we ha shall have two hydrogen ions plus uh, two electrons. Then again, plus two chloride ions aqueous also this one is also aqueous giving us we have here hydrogen gas uh, also plus chlorine gas and lastly plus two electrons so from this equation we can cancel out what is common both sides we discover that uh, we discover that uh, the two electrons are common this side and that side from there we can add up uh, the two hydrogen ions and the two chloride ions can easily be added up to form two hydrogen chloride remember it is aqueous uh, giving us uh, hydrogen gas plus the chloride uh, plus the chlorine gas look when we look at that equation we can easily say that this equation uh, can be easily related to the, our first equation that we wrote in the first place. We can rather say that by inducing the reaction by electric current, uh, hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid.